All right, well, if zombies were to really attack, um, you'd like our software on board. So uh, here's one of those things where uh, a swarm badge is not a good thing. All right, emergency communication 2.0. My name is Zubin Wadia. I represent CivicGuard. We work focus on redefining the emergency communication space. So how are we doing that? Well, let's take a look at the State of the Union today. Hey, clicker dead. So, all right. Um, the emergency alert system as you get today, you're watching a show in the middle of it, you go ahead and you get this little blizzard warning. It's pretty much contextless. It's covering a huge swath of area, and it's doing a pretty good job of raising your awareness, but to be honest with you, it's not actionable. It's not super helpful. Going forward, you also have more modern systems such as SMS-based systems that can alert you in San Francisco, New York, and other metropolitan areas. And yeah, it's pervasive. It gets to your smartphone or your cell phone, but it's not particularly actionable because you're limited by character length, etc. So really, what are the next steps that you can take here? Well, there's Twitter. Twitter's more immediate. Uh, but it's difficult to trust. I mean, look at the Hawaii tsunami over there. You've got four different perspectives. You've got people saying, yeah, it's a big wave coming up. Some people saying there's nothing happening. Uh, there's a lot of conflicting information, and it's difficult to trust. So how are we getting past this as well? So in a nutshell here, you've got awareness and panic, and it's all getting raised as time elapses. So how are you going to mitigate panic and still raise awareness and still keep it actionable? That's what we're trying to crack. Here's a look at what happens when you actually get a mass message scenario occur. You get herd mentality, you get a lot of confusion in the space, you get a lot of people running about, not really knowing what to do, and then you've got the sort of one deviant over there, let's call him uh, Charlie, and he's sort of breaking away from the crowd. And what he's looking for is really trust, timeliness, and transparency within the communication that he's looking for. And how do we attain that? Well, it starts with government itself. Government in the sense that your own government and the amount of information and investment that they've spent since 9-11 on this particular process in terms of first responder communication, in terms of interagency communication, in terms of GIS, in terms of new media, social media, etc. And they've done a lot of investment in actually coordinating their own resources. But there's very little that's been done in terms of getting the civilian outreach angle completed. And that's really, again, what we're trying to resolve, is how do we get civilian outreach to actually take advantage of the fire hose of actionable content that the government is actually generating as of today? Net results can be pretty devastating. We go ahead and change that. We change that by being smartphone optimized. We're focusing on HTML5, WebKit-based technology, uh, very proactive very dynamic, um, and it's very pervasive across the board. We're focusing on the denser cities in the United States, the top 25 most populated cities. And the use context, user context is very simple. Uh, there's a problem. Tell me more. Where am I located? Uh, here are some updates and options. And in the end, it delivers you to safety. That's really the basic context. Achieving this, though, at scale over millions of people in real time is a whole different challenge. What we do is go ahead and offer a bunch of different tools for modeling, execution, outreach, and then assessment dynamically of the civilian movement. And what that does is allows you to, in real time, refine that model and go out there and model and get improved scenarios and improved communication out to the civilian population. Here's a sample of our multi-touch interface. This is using our Bing Maps provider. Uh, we also have a Google Maps provider which can switch over in the event Bing Maps isn't available at that given point in time. So we have a dynamic flail over high resiliency model. And what it allows you to do is go ahead and dynamically model essentially what are scenarios. So in this case, I'm putting in zip codes, et cetera, and also exit provisioning. So I can go ahead and as the situation changes, deprovision a particular exit, switch off a particular bridge to ensure that nobody else is led down the wrong path during a time or an emergency. You also have, obviously, the multi-touch sort of capability to go ahead and set up messages, et cetera, uh, specific to a particular zone or a particular polygon within that particular region. 
And you also have the ability to go ahead and get crowdsourced location feedback. So we have a nice little OpenGL-based backbone, and it gives you a base population density-based heat map. That allows for dynamic reassessment. And you also have Charlie, right? What does he see? Well, you go ahead and you see smartphone location, you see smartphone data on your phone, contextual updates, messages, et cetera, and you also see route plans, et cetera, that's available. You gotta give me uh, 30 seconds. Nope, sorry, people have to eat. <laughs> All right, well, here's our platform. Don't and be around. Right. All right, fine. Thank you very much, Zubin, sorry. All right, cheers.